right? I went to Cambridge on a scholarship in 1960, in September 1960. So after, at the end of that academic year, I decided to, to go back to Sri Lanka for a short holiday. Uh, and this was my first trip on an aircraft because at the time that I went to the UK, I went by ship. Right? And so I went on this, uh, I think it was a turboprop, one of these old Air Lanka planes. And uh, I sat and, uh, on this seat in, in almost in the front of the plane. Uh, and it was very bumpy, the ride was very bumpy. Those planes are not so good as the modern planes now are. Uh, and the guy next to me, when I was feeling a bit queasy, uh, said, oh, you must, you're, you're obvi obviously from Sri Lanka. Uh, you must be used to going in CT on CTB buses and so on. <laughs> and it's much more bumpy, those, those rides, aren't they? So that was the way the, our conversation started and my interaction started with him. Uh, that turned out to be Arthur C. Clarke. Then he asked me what I'm doing here and I said that I, was, uh, I spent a year uh, starting my research work in uh, uh, Cambridge and then I was going for a ho short holiday. My project uh, that I had embarked on was on carbon dust in space, right? At that time, it, there was no connection with biology or life, but it was just carbon dust. The conventional view at the time, astronomers uh, universally held this view that these were just bits of ice, uh, crystals of ice that uh, blocked out the light from stars. And so if you look at the Milky Way, you see this huge um, splash of stars and between the stars you see dark patches and striations and the qu big question was what are, what are these uh, dark patches made of and the conventional wisdom was that it was made of ice and when I tried to examine that idea it turned out that there were lots of problems with the ice theory and so I had to move from ice to carbon and I think when I told, uh, when I mentioned that to Arthur C. Clarke, I think his ears pricked up because carbon is connected with life, of course. At the time, we didn't link it with life. I didn't link it with life. But I bet in his mind, he thought that this was uh, the obvious way that uh, our research would go. And as often, he's right in his predictions, in his forecasting. And what happened over the years was that uh, as my research from interstellar, interstellar carbon to sort of organics to biochemicals progressed, his interest in talking to me also escalated to the point that he was constantly on the phone to me and uh, exchanging letters and so on, uh, trying to find out what's going on in this interesting area of astronomy. He did claim to use these ideas in several places uh, and in one instance I think he considered that uh, humans were throwing microbes into space that right there's some argument that he gave that that we are seeding space with our microbes and that was something that I also talked with him about earlier that if life is coming in from space from outside then we, we, we must also be uh, providing stuff that is going out from the earth that was of a living kind. He had a fantastic sense of humor. I think he always uh, brought that out in every conversation he had with me. There were jokes, there was uh, even his, his most serious ideas, he turned into jokes very often. Arthur Clarke was a great prognosticator of events that were to come, were to happen in the future and his, his uh, communication satellite was the classic instance that everybody knows of. Uh, in his, uh, one of his last books, which is Carbon-Based Life, Carbon-Based Bipeds was the title, he had um, predictions for the future. And one of his predictions was that uh, at the next um, perihelion of Halley's Comet, the century old theory of Hoyle and Vikramasinghe would be proved beyond a shadow of doubt. And he has put that in his book and uh, amongst his other predictions was that I think 10 years from now uh, the artificial intelligence on the earth would have uh, 
overtaken human intelligence. So well, that's still to happen, even the, the, uh, uh, the approach of Halley's Comets is still to happen. But in between his death and now, I think the, the evidence for life in comets has really soared to a point that it becomes almost perverse to ignore that evidence. So uh, I think Arthur Clarke's last wish was more than vindicated, although he didn't even know about the strength of the evidence at the time that he passed away. <laughs>